check this out. With this solar panel and AC 50B power station from Blue Eddy, I'm able to power my electric scooter on sun energy from anywhere, even if I'm off grid. All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Blue Eddy AC 50B portable power station. And I think, you know, uh, the big takeaway for this video and for this product, you know, there's been some small improvements over time in terms of capacity and uh, features. I think the biggest takeaway for this one here is that is they've gone down to a very small light package here, about 14.8 pounds, so very portable. Uh, it's going to be great for camping, uh, use at like picnics, anywhere you're going to be off grid where you need uh, you know portable power, DC and AC power. 448 uh, watt hours of capacity now, 700 watt pure sine wave inverter. It does have the uh, power lifting mode, so you can do devices up to 1000 watts. We'll be testing all this in this video, of course, uh, in detail. But before we uh, get into all that, just want to show you what came in the box. So you get the power station. So here's the box that you can see here. You get an AC plug here for obviously charging um, AC power. You get a solar charging cable here with uh, MC4 connectors and an XD60. And that charges over here in the solar input connector over here. And you also get a car charging cable so you can plug this into your cigarette lighter adapter in your car. Again, the same XD60 for that same uh, uh, DC input port over here. Uh, inside this little bag is a small screw. It's a grounding screw. I'll show you that here on the side of the power station in a second. Get a user's manual and I believe if this is 1.0 here. If you, uh, if you update this it'll be in a PDF file on the product page if you want to check out the latest version. And I'll show you some stuff here in terms of specs and features and stuff that um, I'll show you in some more detail. And then you get a warranty card. It does come with a five-year warranty. Now these power stations have longer warranties now because these use lithium iron phosphate chemistry which is has a huge amounts of longevity so uh, you know lithium iron phosphate is known to last up to 10 years and you still have 80 percent capacity so you know if you use this every day fully charge or drain it up to 3,000 cycles i believe and that's about 10 years of life and you'll still have 80 percent capacity which is pretty amazing all right, so taking a look around the power station, you get this nice little handle here on the top in the back, very easy, very easy to carry around. On the right side here, you've got your uh, AC power plug, so you're going to plug that in here to your wall, and they'll charge, I think it's up to 580 watts maximum, and then this is the uh, screw for your grounding. On the left side, you just have a little vent here and a fan. Here's the back, you just get you know your sticker here, QR code probably goes to the manual, and uh, you know, again, I'll show you more specs in the manual, but if you want to pause the video, here's some of the specs on the back of the power station. Nothing on the bottom, you just get some rubber feet here, and if you probably noticed, there's no light on this one. All right, here's a look at the front. You got your two AC ports here, 700 watts total for the inverter. Demand. And, you know, if you have one device here and one device here, it's going to be 700 watts total. Even even with uh, things that are using DC as power as well, so it's 700 watts for the whole power station. But if you're wondering if you get 700 watts per AC port, uh, it's basically split between these two. And in fact, uh, 700 watts completely is the total capacity of the power station. So you got those two AC ports here. On the bottom here, you have a USB-C 65 watt port, another USB-C 65 watt port, and then you have a USB-A 15 watt port. Got your buttons here for turning on the different um, sections. So the lights up green when it's turned on for DC power, AC power, you can just press the button in and then you get a little indicator here on the screen as to when things are on and off. And then there's a bunch of icons here that go on the screen. I'll show you that in the manual here in a second. There's too, too many here to mention right now. Uh, of course, there's the buttons, the power button to turn on off the power station. And as I mentioned before, this is the DC uh, solar panel input here. So basically, XC60 connection, the voltage range is 12 to 28 volts and eight and a half amps up to 200 watts max. So uh, what you put in here, you're gonna have to watch the voltage it has to be within this range to work properly. And it will work with other solar panels, uh, but it does have to be within this voltage range. Now, uh, Blue 80 did send me their PV120 uh, folding solar panel. I will talk about that a little bit later in the video. And you get one more DC output port here. This is a cigarette lighter output, and it outputs at 12 volts up to 10 amps or 120 watts. 
And you see here you get your basic display, shows your input wattage, output wattage, your battery percentage, change your power frequency as well. There's a way you can get into the settings. You have to just uh, long press or the uh, long press the DC and AC buttons together. And it gets you into this mode where you can change the different settings. So here you can choose between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. And then once that's selected, you press DC to go to the next menu item. So there's this uh, turbo uh, mode here for the AC charging. You can you have that on or off. So it's going to be turned off right now and demonstrate that uh, the different levels here in a second. And another setting here is the power lifting mode. Looks kind of like a uh, like a weightlifting icon there. It's currently off. You can turn it on, and then the, the weight power or the, the, the power lifting mode will allow devices up to a thousand watts to be used. And I'll show you what the differences are between those two in a second. And go to the next here, eco mode. At determines how and uh, when the power station shuts off if it's inactive. And I'll show you that again a little bit later. And then you have the Bluetooth icon here and you can turn that on and off to allow connection uh, to the power station with the Blue 80 app from your smartphone or tablet. I will show you that as well. And then we're back to PO1 and then just long press the DC and AC buttons together to exit this and then you can also change all these settings in the app as well. And just to show you uh, what it's noted in the manual in terms of what the display is, you can go ahead and pause the video if you want to uh, reread in detail. And here are all the icons that can show up on the display, including some of the error icons. So go ahead and pause the display or pause the video if you want to take a look at this. Okay, so here is the AC charging mode and a description of the three different modes. You have standard, turbo, and silent. And, and this is kind of just depicts like what the recharging power is like for the three different modes. Standard is obviously what comes out in default, but if you don't ha want or need to charge, recharge your power station quickly, you can just turn it to silent. I think that reduces the amount of noise the fan makes and also uh, will help improve longevity of the battery if you charge it slower. But if you're in a hurry, you can charge it really fast, up to 580 watts, and uh, that is gonna be 80% charge in 45 minutes, full charge in 70 minutes. And interestingly, you can do uh, AC and uh, solar charging at the same time. And you can see here, the max is gonna be 580 watts in the turbo mode. We'll demonstrate there here in a second, but I believe once you have this connected with a solar panel at uh, the 580 watts, uh, I believe uh, you'll get the wattage from the solar panel to help reduce the wattage that you're drawing from your grid. So if you're kind of wanting to, you know, put more solar energy in and not necessarily so much AC power in, you can do that, but of course still get the benefit of the fastest available charging, and so you can uh, charge both at the same time. Okay, so I installed the uh, Blue Eddy app on this tablet here and I'm connected to the power station via Bluetooth. And you get some basic information here, um, pretty similar to what's on the uh, main display here. But, you know, if the power station is like say under a desk or somewhere where you can't necessarily look at the display easily, you say it's on the floor or something, you don't want to like, crouch down, this is an ideal way to get your statistics on what the power station is doing without having to crawl into in an awkward space to look at it. Just connect wirelessly to it. You can see the same information, you know, how much um, uh, wattage is going in, how much is going out via DC and AC. You can actually turn on and off stuff here uh, via the app. So go ahead and turn on the DC output. Go ahead and turn that on. You can see uh, the DC output is on over here. Same with AC. Go ahead and turn that on. Go ahead and confirm, and now uh, the AC is turned on over there as well. And then clicking in. And over here under settings, uh, you can change your charging mode. So I'm going to demonstrate the differences here between standard turbo and silent. Let's do that first. All right, so we can plug in the uh, AC cord and see what kind of numbers we get here. You should see the input ramping up. Okay, so we can see the max we're hitting here in the standard mode is 276 watt input. So go back into the app here. Let's go ahead and change this to uh, turbo. And let's see what happens. Yep, now we're ramping up. It should top out at about 580 watts. There we go. And then we can also see here what's going on 
on the app as well. This is grid, 579 watts, and matches what's on this display. And you see the charge level going over very quickly. All right, switch the charging mode to silent. And we'll hit OK. Now slow down the rate of charging. Now we're at, yeah, I think it's like, yeah, it's got 170 watts there. And you can see, the, you could, I probably can't hear as much, but I can hear the fan has uh, reduced in speed quite a bit. When you're at the in turbo, the fan's pr fairly loud. Not super loud, but you can hear it for sure. But now um, the fan is kind of blending into the background noise. I can still hear it, but definitely a lot less noisy than before. Okay, so I'm gonna start plugging in stuff here and we'll just show you a demo of the um, power draw on the power station. So I've got a small power bank here and I'm gonna plug this into the USB-C A at 15 watts, see what happens. And you see it jumps up to nine watts right away. So this is on obviously, yeah, about halfway full, more than halfway full. So probably not drawing the max, but you know, if you have something that can draw 15 watts on USB-A, you'll see that there, but nine watts are currently on that one. Got another large power bank here. This one can charge via USB-C and I think up to 100 watts, I believe. But uh, this is only gonna be 65 watts here. So I'm gonna plug that in. So remember we're at nine watts now, so let's plug this in. And on this power bank, it shows you how many watts are coming in. 63 watts here, and on this power station, it's showing 69 watts. So basically the nine watts here on the USB-A plus the 60. So it's sending out 60 here, but over here it's reading 64 watts. So it kind of depends on the device. So you get a little bit of a discrepancy in terms of the numbers. But yeah, we're charging here at 69 watts total. All right, so over here on the left of the power station, I've got a laptop here. I'm gonna plug this in. This is gonna be charging via USB-C as well. And I believe this is also more than 60 watts, but it's gonna max out, I'm gonna max out this port here at 65 watts. So it was a 69 before, and this should ramp up. All right, there we go, kicked in. And now we're at 123 watts total on the uh, DC side. Now we're going to plug in another thing here on the DC side on the cigarette lighter adapter. So all kinds of stuff going in here. So I've got the light over here and I have a little XT60 connector on this side. And I'm going to be uh, plugging this into a LiPo battery charger. And go ahead and charge up a battery. This is going to add too much because this is a pretty small battery. It's only a like a forest battery. Right head start. And we see the numbers ramping up here. I think it was 129 before, now it's 150, 151. And over here it's saying it's 25 watts. So again, slight discrepancy between devices here, but this power station showing 150 watts. And you can see that also on the app. 150 watts going out DC. Okay, so I've pretty much maxed out all the ports here on the DC side. Let's go ahead and start plugging in some AC stuff and seeing what happens. Got a heat gun here, and this one is about 320 watts. I believe it's usually about 300 watts when I use it. Let's go ahead and plug that in. And turn this on. It's gonna be pretty noisy. So I saw a jump up there, like about 480 some watts. Okay, I got another device here. This is like a water bottle that you can heat up, uh, obviously via electricity. This is a uh, really nice to have in the winter, but not in the summer. Plug that in. You can hear the fan of the inverter kicking on quite a bit. This one draws a fair amount more power. You can see the red light turning on there. And we're at uh, 644 watts total. Now, uh, I did test this before, and this drew about 400-ish watts or so. So obviously it's, it's combining the DC plus the AC in terms of total output. So now I'm gonna take the heat gun, I'm gonna plug that into the second port over here. And we'll turn this on. 
and then watch the numbers carefully because it's going to do some tricks here because uh, well what will happen I think the inverter will just shut off here so I'm going to turn the heat gun on it'll go over the 700 watt limit so it's actually going over So interestingly, I was expecting the inverter to shut down. It went to like 800 something. Uh, I don't have the power lifting mode on. So surprisingly, this is able to go over 700. I was kind of I'm not expecting that. All right, so I unplugged the heat gun. I'm gonna plug in a hair dryer now. This will definitely uh, put the inverter into um, voltage over, over current protection. It'll shut down the inverter. There we go. Turned it on and immediately, it, you saw it burst up to like a thousand something and it shut off. It's still showing 147 watts because this hair dryer is still trying to draw power or this uh, water bottle is still trying to draw power. So let me just unplug this. Yeah, it looks like it's just basically in a shutdown mode. You can see it's got this error code. The uh, overcurrent protection is kicked in. So what you gotta do is just turn off the AC, and then just reset it, turn back on, and you should be able to go ahead and use it again. So, I'm, so I just have the hair dryer plugged in right now. Let's go ahead and turn that on. You see now we're up to 830 watts with just the, just the, on low power. So apparently you can go a little bit over, oh, nope, there it goes. That's what I was expecting before. Apparently you can go over 700 watts for a short amount of time. Uh, if it's just a little bit like eight, you know, like 800 is only like 100 watts over the 700. But then eventually it's too much for the inverter, it's going to shut down. And this is, this is not in the power lifting mode. So we'll go ahead and reset this. So I'm going to turn the uh, power lifting mode on. Go into the settings here, turn this on. And the power lifting mode will basically, uh, it, for certain devices that are like, uh, I guess they're, they use a like a heating element like this water bottle here it uses like resistive heating um, it will do some tricks to the uh, voltage of the device and but still maintain that or you know the safe 700 watts and then of course if you go way too way too much over uh, it'll, it, it's going to shut down of course but it'll, it'll give you a little bit of wiggle room in terms of being able to use devices that are maybe drawing a little bit too much power than this power station can handle so I got the power lifting mode on, got that little icon right there, and turn on the hair dryer. And you can see that. So on this first level here of the hair dryer, you can see it's going at like 750 watts. But when I go to level two on the fan, See, the, the wattage drops down, the hair dryer turns off because the, the tricks they're trying to do doesn't work on this particular device. And then you can see the inverter has kicked off. So it doesn't work on all devices, so let's go ahead and unplug the hair dryer. And we'll go ahead and reset the inverter again. So again, again I'll go ahead and plug in the water bottle. Giving this inverter a workout here, seeing if I can kill it, but obviously the uh, overcurrent protection is gonna kick in every time. And you can see here with this water bottle heating up, it's uh, 630 watts. And I'm gonna plug in this uh, heat gun again. It's gonna add another 300 watts here. And go ahead and turn it on. Now we're drawing 840. But for these devices, it's okay. It seems to be doing the job. So for these kind of devices here, again, resistive loads, uh, you can use the power lifting mode to be able to utilize these devices. So obviously I'm kind of maxing things out here. And again, just kind of gives you a little bit of wiggle room in terms of uh, what you can put on the inverter in case you need to go over the 700 watts. And in case anyone's wondering, you can charge the power station at the same time you're using the power draw on the power station as a pass-through. So you can see where uh, the AC plugged in over there on the side, 165 watts going in, and all these devices being charged up here, we're drawing 117 watts. So at this rate, we'll be slowly charging up the power station. 
Another thing to mention is in addition to solar panels and also car charging, you can plug this into a generator as well and that obviously puts in DC power. And also the uh, B80 expansion battery from Blue Eddy. So they have a, an expansion battery you can plug in here to basically give you more capacity and you use the DC input port here for that. And just a little bit of information about the uh, PV120 120 watt folding solar panels. Uh, this is probably one of the nicest 100 watt solar panels for, uh, that I've seen from Blue Eddy. They do have a 200 watt folding solar panel as well. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, of course, to get that 200 watts. Now, it's pretty standard. It's got your, you know, ETFE lamination like most solar panels and up to 23.4% efficient. Uh, the build quality is very nice. It's got like uh, some sort of cloth material on the outside. Uh, obviously, the cables inside are very long, got MC4 connectors, and of course, you use that to connect with the uh, MC4 connector um, XT60 adapter that came with the AC50B to plug that into the DC input port to uh, solar charge the uh, power station. Now the uh, voltage rating of this one is around 19 volts so that's obviously going to be within the 20 or the 12 to 24 voltage range of this power station that's perfect. Now if you want to put in uh, if you get another one of these I actually I actually bought another one of these PV120s uh, with my own money and I wanted to charge both of them to get additional um, you know basically a power input uh, but you're going to have to get a parallel adapter to charge this, uh, charge the power station uh, uh, with the two solar panels. Because if you go in series, it's going to go over the voltage rating. It's, it's going to be like 36 volts, 38 volts, which is over the 24 volts and it'll exceed the rating of the power station. So if you do get two folding um, solar panels, you will have to get a parallel adapter. I'll link that in the video description in case you're wondering uh, what that is. But it's, it's you know pretty simple little uh, cable that will connect the two solar panels in parallel and will combine the total wattage. So in terms of wattage, I got about 88-ish watts with one solar panel under pretty ideal conditions. And then um, two solar panels, uh, a little over 160 watts uh, total combined power. Now, of course, you know, like I was using this um, with my scooter as an example in, in my Instagram post. All right, so I should cover for this uh, video on the Blue 80 AC50B. Again, we got more capabilities and a smaller and lighter package. So all, all in all, pretty nice little deal here. I'll put a link down in the video description if you guys want to check it out. That'll do it for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.